And I can tell it's been a long time because I just went to pour my tea and I poured it out of my cup. So um, it's definitely getting close to the time where we will wrap up all of the incredible contributions from our teachers, from your presence here, and um, just go forth into our lives having been so nourished and enhanced by this experience, this overwhelmingly beautiful experience that we've been able to co-create. We could not have done it without you and you showed up in the most dynamic and beautiful of ways. So thank you. And our Sarah, who has held such a beautiful space today, is going to lead us into our next practice. Um, so thank you, Sarah, for asking me if there was a way we could raise funds for India because here we did it. We raised way more than my wildest dreams and uh, sold about 108 tickets. So, so many of you just really, really showed up. But I, if Sarah didn't ask me, what can we do for India? This never would have happened. So I really owe it to you, Sarah, to say thank you and um, whatever small way we can contribute to this beautiful land that gave, gifted us yoga, um, we're doing it. So thank you. Mm. So, you know, we thought that we would, we would do a meditative practice. Some of you have been with us throughout the day and some are just joining. And um, we just wanted to do something to bring together all of what has been shared and, um, and touched uh, through practice today and just through being together. And, um, You know, and one thing that was happening throughout today is that we're coming together as a tradition. And um, maybe you're a part of this tradition. Maybe you don't see yourself as that way. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about and that's okay too, you know, but for those of us who are, are part of the Krishnamacharya and Deskachar tradition, um, it means the world to us. And um, that has, shown in every person who has taught today and in the practitioners who have been a part of it. And, um, you know, and it's truly a gifted experience to be able to receive these teachings um, so directly and so clearly. Uh, it's, it's an incredibly gifted experience that I think all of us are always aware of and um, and just need even more opportunities to express um, how meaningful that is. And so just to, to get us into something like meditation, I just wanted to talk about two things because we wanna present this meditation practice as prayer. And um, that's not necessarily language that we always use in practice, you know, maybe in like more lay yoga practice. Um, we don't always necessarily use that language that, that that's what we're doing, that that's part of what we're doing. Um, but certainly it is. And, um, and just to get us there, I just wanted to talk about two things. So for me, there's two things about this tradition that I really feel so lucky to have received. One of them is Deskachar's teaching that yoga is relationship, which is a definition of yoga that is so expansive and so specific and so real in time that, um, 
it's just incredible. I just, it's just continually expands its meaning for me. Yeah. And then the other part is that we are a tradition that prioritizes a way of looking at practice that is uh, greatly individualized and um, touches our life in a specific way so that we can really get down to the real work of yoga, of transformation. And as someone who trained to learn how to apply that methodology, the gift that I received is that I got to learn yoga as something that I had access to. That it was not, um, that yes, it was sacred and special and meaningful and um, that it's, teachings come from a specific source and there are these specific texts and we have somewhere to go. You know, we don't need to make anything up. It's all there for us. And uh, it's incredibly present and accessible to be used in my life. You know? um, and I think often with things like this, you know, we think that Prayer has to be handed down from on high in order for us to recognize something as prayer or recognize something as sacred. And, um, you know, I think that prayer is when our intention, our attention, and our heart come together in the same place and need to be spoken. And these practices are all about how we are in relationship with our attention so that we can be in our life more fully. So we want to offer uh, this practice tonight as a, a little meditation practice to, in the spirit of gratitude Gratitude for the teachings we received, gratitude for the culture that held on to it and uh, nourished it, gratitude for the teachers that gave it to us, but also this um, practice of giving and receiving through our attention as um, a way that we can connect to what I would call prayer in a way that feels very much in our life, very much coming from my life, very much linked to what my life is. Um, and before I we go there, I just also want to open Danielle. I know we've sat through so many people talking today about these practices and what it means to them. And I wonder, you know, your thoughts about if you want to add something about prayer and its role, what it means to you. Thank you for asking what keeps resonating in my mind, Sarah, as you talk about prayer is our Dear yoga inspiration, Sri Krishnamacharya's commentary on what practice actually is. So as we all know, practice has four components in order to even be considered practice. Yoga is, you know, we have Kate who just spoke about how open and relevant it is, um, and it is, but it's also really hard work. So yoga considers practice practice if it's done every day over a long period of time with faith and you also have to like and have a, a positive relationship with what you're doing it can't be drudgery so what krishnamacharya says in his commentary on this sutra particularly with this idea of satkara or doing it with faith is do it like a prayer do your practice like a prayer and he's very open so 
you know, in, in our lineage, the idea is that connection to a higher power is optional. If you're an atheist, you can do yoga. If you're agnostic, you can do yoga. If you're Muslim, if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, you can do yoga. You can practice yoga. But what Krishnamacharya says, your prayer is to a higher power if you worship a higher power. If you don't, then your prayer is the alignment, and it's very much in line with what you were saying, Sarah, between the mind and the body and the breath. That's your prayer. If you're a yoga practitioner, your prayer is to the, the light within you, the purusha, the authentic self, the inner being, the seer. That's, that's what we are having a sense of reverence to. So, uh, I mean, straight from the source, practice must be done this way. This is an essential component of practice or there is a disjointedness in the practice and it actually um, backfires in the sense that it's not efficient. We want our yoga practice to be as efficient as possible. So that means the relationship we're cultivating with our practice and our own selves has to be at the forefront of what we're doing. And that is a significant part of it, according to Krishnamacharya. Do it as if it's to a prayer, to, your high, to a higher power, a prayer to alignment within your system, or even as a, with a reverence for and a, a lifting up of uplifting of the Purusha's presence in the system. So that's what I would like to add. And it is so, we didn't even talk about this, but it is absolutely in alignment with, with what you shared. No surprise. Thank you, Vinu. Yeah, and what a freeing thing to understand yoga as this relationship that we can have rather than anything outside of ourselves, rather than anything outside of um, the capacity in me that's already there, right? As, as long as I'm, if I'm paying attention and I'm present, I can be in relationship. And um, it really gives yoga to us so that we can use it in our life when we think of it that way. So we're going to do a little meditative practice. Um, we'll start standing and then we'll end up sitting for a little bit and absolutely such an important uh, aspect of the Krishnamacharya understanding of prayer is chanting and there's nowhere more uh, that I feel more lit up by listening to chant than Danielle. So, um, and our chanting today has a very special meaning because we lost Radha, who is the chanting teacher for all of us, whether we realize it or not. And so um, certainly even just listening to the sound today is a very powerful prayer. So I'll have you come and stand when you're ready. So just come to stand in a way that's comfortable for you. Let your arms rest along your side. And you can close your eyes or keep your eyes open, whatever makes you feel stable in yourself. 
And especially if you've been in these practices throughout the day, like Amy was talking about, it's so important that, you know, we do these practices because they are powerful. So just notice how you feel. Notice where you're coming from. Notice what you've taken in. Acknowledge the whisper of the feeling tone of the body. Feel your feet on the ground. And let your awareness come to the feeling of your gentle, easy, natural breath. We understand prana, the energy that rides on the breath as our closest connection to something bigger than ourselves. So as you feel the sensation of the breath, just feel that that sensation comes along with the energy of prana that is within you, that's moving within you. And we'll go through this practice to acknowledge on all the dimensions of self, our own path, and to call in to our practice what and who has been a support to us on our path. So when you come to your next inhale, as you breathe in, raise your arms and just let your hands hover over the crown of your head and stay there as you exhale. And take a breath here. And when you feel your next inhale, feel it. And as you exhale, let your hands run over, hover over the front of the body and let the body just follow the movement of the hands to bring you down into a gentle forward bend, just covering over the whole body. And then stay at the bottom there, nice soft bottom, whatever that looks like for you and take a breath there. And when you come to your next inhale, you'll raise your arms, bring the hands back to hover over the crown of the head. And you'll stay there and take a breath. Just meeting your body. When you come to an exhale, let the hands run over the body. Let the body respond to the movement of your hands. And just drop into what feels like the base of the body for you. Stay there and take a breath. So go ahead and do this two more times on your own. And without going into a story, bring to mind for you what feels like a support that has brought you to your body on your path. Maybe that doesn't have a name or a place or a time. Just bring it simply to mind and let it be part of your attention in your body and your breath.
when you finish this next round, rest with your hands at your heart, upright with the spine. And just hold the presence of that source of support for a moment. And then without leaving the sense of connection, bring yourself to a comfortable seated posture where you can stay for the rest of the practice. And once you get there, bring your hands back to the center of the chest. Let the eyes rest in a position of relaxed focus, eyes open or closed. And let the hands hover over the center of the chest. Bring your attention back to your breath in this orientation with the body. And when you feel your next inhale, follow the inhale with the hands to hover down towards the belly. And as you exhale, let the hands slide back up to hover over the chest. So just following the flow of the breath with your hands and your attention, call into your practice who or what or when brought you in relationship to your breath? Where did that support come from? And again, try and not go into a story. Just allow the simple answer of what comes up to be enough. Finish the round you're on and do two more. And then with your hands at your chest, you'll meet your palms together. But allow the fingertips to meet and there to be some space between the palm. So you're holding some space between the palm. Staying attentive in your breath. Meeting ourselves in a dimension of mind. Call into your practice, who taught you? Who is your teacher? And there may be many names, and many categories that come in. Allow them to move into the space between the palms between the air and you. Who taught you? What taught you? What brought you to the knowledge that led you back to yourself?
And then let the hands come to the knees. And when the hands come to the knees, turn the palms down and meet the thumb and pointer fingers together. Feel a gentle connection between the fingers. And the circle created by this gesture. And for a moment, just consider what in your experience brought you to this interest that Danielle was speaking of? What in your way made this practice something that you were drawn to that you're inspired by. We often see our conditioning as the problem and it often is. But there's also something in us that made us go in a direction. Fed by all of our life experience. And just notice that. For a moment, call in that part of yourself that was ready to be awake. Allow your breath to be easy and soft. And then allow those details to go and just rest in a subtle, unbroken cycle of the breath, the subtle breath that's breathing the body. Rest in your attention, this space that is beyond ourselves, that is part of ourselves. And we'll listen to the chant. And as you listen to the chant, stay in this space of both giving attention and receiving the relationship of the sound and ourselves. And staying with your breath. Jāvi pāpmā bhūyā 
Swaha Om Shira Pani Pada Parshva Prashto Dara Jangha Shishno Pasthapaya Vome Shadhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sagaswaha Om Tvakcharmama Gong Sarudhirame Dosthimajame Shadhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sagaswaha Om Shabdas Parsha Rupa Rasa Gandha Me Shadhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sagaswaha Om Prithivyapte Jovai Vakasha Me Shadhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapama Bhuya Sagaswaha Om Annamaya Pranamaya Manomaya Vigyanamaya Anandamaya Me Shadhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sagaswaha Om Vivit Tiai Swaha Om Ghashot Kaya Swaha Om Uttishtha Purusha Hare Lo Hita Pingalakshi Dehi Dehi Dada Paitame Shudhyantan Jyoti Raham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sagaswaha Svaha
Allow your breath to deepen. Allow the breath to expand into the space between you and what's just outside of you. But stay for a moment with that space between you and what's around you. That space that through our attention, our intention, and with the light of our heart can be limitless. And allow this last moment of connection to yourself to expand out. So that the support that you've acknowledged in your own path can spread out in our intention to be of use in the world, to serve others, to walk with gratitude for what we've received and to acknowledge the bonds that are part of us. To live yoga as relationship. Let your palms come together. Bowing first to each other. Bowing again to your own practice. I want to offer a very special bow to my teacher, to Danielle, who is not only the source of my own practice, but the continued strength that keeps me on the path and um, such an inspired collaborator for this event. I, I had a little idea and she had the idea to go to go big <laughs> and it was needed and I'm very grateful to be a part of that and to be a part of all of your practice today and tonight. And I acknowledge my teacher who has always inspired me to go big just through the way she lived her life with such dignity and intention. And uh, again, I want to say that this, the convergence of her dying this morning and this event happening today just shows me that the universe is really infinite so um thank you you guys you have no idea how much it means to me that i got to spend this day with you otherwise i would have been in a puddle all day so um india is alive in the yoga that we teach and there is no other way to teach it for us this is who we are and this is who will stay Thank you for also being who you are and staying close to the source. Thank you so much for being part of today in the way you've been. We are going to um, 
do whatever it takes to detox from uh, 13 hours of being on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, we will send out, um, soon we'll send out just a thank you to you all and just a, a way to connect you with all the teachers who have been a part of today so that you can continue those bonds. Yeah. Um, I hope this will not, uh, this will be a more, uh, more common experience where we all come together in this way for, for better reasons, happier reasons, I hope, in the future. Thank you all.